Python comes with some rudimentary graphical user interface capabilities, and I'm going to use those now to demonstrate the KD tree in action. Once we're done with that, we'll be able to solve a specific problem using the KD tree structure. But for now, let's just solve the simple problem of showing a KD tree on a two dimensional window and allowing the user to add points by clicking the mouse. Instead of writing this from scratch, I'm just going to show you the code here and hit the high points. And then I'll let you look at it as you will. It uses a module called tkinter, which is the ever popular TK toolset that's been used on multiple platforms. As I said, it's a rudimentary user interface. It does all the things that I want in a very convenient way. I'm going to run it first so you can see what it does. And then we'll look at the code to get a better understanding of how it actually does it. In this two-dimensional plane here, I want to add some points. I add my first point. As we've explained, in the KD tree, the very first point is always a vertical partition. And what this app shows is not just the point that was inserted, that little red rectangle, but the vertical partitioning that's being used to separate it up from a above and below. All the spaces here would be below. All the places up here would be above. When I add a second point here, we've seen the logic already that says, how do I add a node to a, to a KD tree? Well, I start at the root, and I ask, is that point above or below? Well, since I was clicking on the left-hand side, that falls into the below category. And so this point here was added to the below subtree. The same thing over here would be the right side. Now you might say, well, what happens now when you click? I've got my four quadrants, but now what happens? Well, I've already flipped the orientation from vertical to horizontal. So now when I click in any of these regions, it's going to be flipped back to vertical. And this line here, as you see, doesn't extend across the whole space. There's only one that does, the root line. This one shows that he's partitioning the infinite space. Each of these horizontal lines are for the two children of the root. And they represent that they're partitioning half of the space into quarters. And this line here, which is the grandson of the original root, is showing how he partitions this quarter into eighths. And it's just fun to just do this a couple of times. And it looks a little like a Franklin Lloyd Wright picture or something. But it's a really uh, stylized way of capturing a space. And the thing that should strike you when you're looking at it is that it's, rather, it's a collection of rectangles that are more or less the same size. It's not always true, of course. There's a big square up here. But when I'm looking at these, I somehow have been able to add 20 points. And I've created all these rectangular regions that are more or less the same size that suggest that I truly have been able to partition up a space into problems that are of ever decreasing granularity. So that if I'm looking for a point in this space, I can actually start at the root, go left or right, go to the next child, go above, go below. And that's the intuition that we'll use for solving what's called the nearest neighbor problem, which we'll be introducing after we're done with this code segment. To show you how this works, I need to now go to the code to demonstrate how I'm able to do all of this. There's some rudimentary TK intercode, which I will let you learn on your own by reading the appropriate documentation. Here I just create a frame, and within that frame is a canvas where I'm going to do my drawing. I want to activate based on the button clicks. And when I do, I want to add a point. That's what you see down here. So the click method is an event handler that reacts to those mouse clicks. And what does it do? It takes whatever the tree is, and it adds a point to the tree. Now, to make this work properly, we have to deal with some special issues that revolve around coordinate systems. And to answer that, I am going to go back to the slides for a little bit. And when I'm done, we'll come back here and finish off this code. When mathematicians invented the Cartesian coordinate system, they were not thinking of my mobile phone. The mathematical coordinate system is infinite in all directions. And in that situation, what do you do about the origin? Well, the origin is in the middle then, and you would extend infinitely in all different directions. In this Cartesian coordinate system then, the middle point is where I consider 0, 0. And when I go to the right, my x coordinate is increasing. When I go to the left, my x coordinate is decreasing. And it naturally gives you positive numbers and negative numbers when you move away from the origin. In that same role, when you go up, the y values are increasing. And when you go down, 
the y values are decreasing. So you get positive y values going up and negative y values going down. However, in computing devices, we don't have infinite space. And in fact, we have to have some coordinate system to represent where do these windows go and what happens when I click the mouse. And so what coordinates have done is to set the upper left-hand corner of your device is traditionally 0, 0. And the x coordinate is the same. When you're going left to right across your display, your x coordinate is increasing from 0 and onwards. However, the y coordinate is different. And in a computer screen, it's traditional that the y coordinate increases as you move down the screen. Again, you could look at both of these arbitrary decisions. It's just, for our purposes today, they're opposite. And we have to take that into account. And the reason is because KD trees are dealing with Cartesian coordinates and the regions that are formed over a Cartesian space. So I have to spend, unfortunately, a little bit of energy in always translating coordinates from a graphical Python coordinate system into a Cartesian coordinate system. The good news is that it's actually very easy to do this. And the way that you to provide the intuition is the following. If I have a computer device, it has a fixed height. And when I look at where the y value is, I can compute it based upon how far away it is from the top coordinate. So if I want to convert that into a Cartesian coordinate, all I have to do is take the current height of that device and subtract that point. That will allow me to move the upper left-hand corner, which would otherwise be 0, 0. In Cartesian coordinates, I could consider that 0, 480, let's say, or 800, depending on your screen size. So that basic observation is that when I'm flipping from coordinate systems, from the Python coordinate space into the KD tree coordinate space, I'm going to be taking the y coordinate and I'm going to be subtracting it from another value that will allow me to convert from Cartesian to the Python coordinate system. We'll look at the code to see how it's done. The click method is designed to take a point from the Python coordinate system and add it to the Cartesian KD tree. To do this, I have to convert it into Cartesian coordinates. And so I have created these two special helper functions. One is called to Cartesian that takes a y coordinate, which is otherwise a Python coordinate, and converts it into its appropriate Cartesian coordinates. And at the same time, I have another function called to TK, which would take a Cartesian y coordinate and convert it into the Python coordinate system. Once you get those two functions to work, then all you have to do is make sure that when you're translating points, you just call them and your code is simpler for it. So my click method does nothing more than figure out what the point was that the user clicked on in the Python TK coordinate system, creates the appropriate Cartesian point, and adds it to the tree. And just to show you how that co coordinate transfer works, I take the current height of my computing device, and from that I subtract y. And that allows you to invert and put this point in the appropriate location as far as the Cartesian coordinates are concerned. Once I've added that point, then I need to draw the tree. And to draw the tree, I'm going to design a function which is a recursive function. There is a need when you have a recursive structure to visit all the elements. And when you have a binary tree structure like we have here, I need to make sure I visit every node as well as every child of every node. And so this is called a, a tree traversal. And computer science has many different tree traversals that are useful. For example, if you have a binary search tree and you want to visit the binary search tree in order of the sorted elements that should be in there, you do what's called an in-order traversal. There are others that could be useful. Um, if you've ever seen postfix notation, um, a, a mathematical notation that says, I want to add 5 and 6 together. So instead of using the in-order representation, which is 5 plus 6, it's oftentimes convenient to say 5, 6, and then the plus at the end. In fact, this is how PostScript does all of its computations. And there's another one called prefix, where you put the operator first, and then the numbers come second. What's really important is that when you traverse the tree, you make sure you visit every node exactly once, and you want to do it in a certain order. And so what I'm going to do is to do a pre-order traversal. When I get to a node, the first thing I'm going to do is draw the partition, because that's the most important thing for me. And then I'm going to visit 
the tree that's to the left, which would be a below tree, and the tree that's to the right, which is the above tree. And then presumably, in a recursive way, when I get to a node, which is a horizontal partition, I will draw that partition, in this case it'll be horizontal, and then I'll visit the tree that's above and the tree that's below. So when I draw my partition in this application, I have to be aware of what my point is, what my orientation is, and what the region is that I'm partitioning. Once I have that region, I know how to draw the x min or the x max, or the y min or the y max. Unfortunately, I still have some work to do because since the Cartesian coordinate system is infinite, I have to translate those infinite numbers into actual real numbers in the Python space. I'll let you look at that code on your own, but you can see here I have to take a little bit of care to make sure that I deal with those infinite values appropriately. But the draw partition method is rather straightforward. If I'm drawing a vertical line, that's actually the easiest one of all. I just create a line through my point. My point is associated with that region, and that's the point P and its x-coordinate. And I draw it from my current y-min to my current y-max. That's the easiest one to do. The x-coordinate one, when you're doing a horizontal partitioning, is a little more complicated, but you can look at that code on your own and see how it works. Finally, when I'm done, I draw the rectangle on top so I can see that point. And I'm just going to give myself four pixels in either direction so I have something visible instead of an infinitesimal point. And then that's all that this does. Whenever you add a point to the tree, it goes on in, calls paint. And the paint method, as you see here, says, if I have a root, it's time to visit that. Otherwise, you may remember when I ran the application for the first time, it has this helpful screen at the beginning that says, click here to add points. Clearly, that's not part of the KD tree. Once I've pushed that aside, every point I add is now part of a KD tree, which is being visited. And when I visit it, I visit the node itself. Then I visit all the children that are below it and all the children that are above it. And I let the recursion take its course. And it flips the orientation from vertical to horizontal. And I just react by drawing the lines with the right coordinates, x min to x max in this case, or in this case here, y min to y max. So this is a nice little application that demonstrates in a graphical form that my KD tree implementation is sound. I have created a structure that lets me partition points in a two-dimensional collection in such a way that I'm able to rapidly locate points by cutting the search space in half with every iteration looking either to the left or to the right, or below and above. And in this way, I only need log n steps to locate a point in the tree. The KD tree structure we've just described is a versatile, extremely powerful data structure that can be used in a number of domains. These KD trees are, in fact, a special case of a more broad spectrum of data structures known as binary space partitioning structures. These form the basis for all 3D rendering programs that you see, whether in real time or in creating 3D movies. And so they have a very important role to play. And so if you're interested in this sort of domain, I really encourage you to continue this exploration and learning more about the 3D variants of binary space partitions. This concludes our module on KD trees.